Okay, Yorick, I think there is a lot of confusion in the industry or with customers about the term backup. So a lot of customers, I think, think that when they talk about backup, they go, oh, can you make sure you back up my pool? And can you make sure you back up my air conditioner? And it, which appliances are you going to back up at night time? That's exactly right, Mark. So there is a difference between a nighttime power supply from the battery and backup in a blackout or, or grid outage. And we call this EPS backup, so an emergency power supply. The first reason I would not do full house backup, and I'll just talk a little bit from my own experience. I've got everything except for my EV charger on my backup circuit. So if I have a blackout, everything works except for my car, and so my car won't charge, and that's because I don't want to drain my battery overnight. I had, a, had a, not one of our customers called up with a Powerwall 2, and they had a three-phase inverter, and the Powerwall 2 couldn't keep the three-phase inverter online in a blackout. Often people, don't, the installers don't know what they're doing. Th that is true. Look, look, for our customers, it's all about making sure it's designed correctly. There's another reason, a second reason that you wouldn't want to do whole-of-house backup. Yeah, that's right, Mark. It's these huge houses that have got three-phase. They put a massive solar system in. They might have put a 10-kilowatt inverter on there. And... They're tripping their system and they're like, how is this possible? Like, I, I, I've totally overkilled. Now, there's a third reason though, Yorick. We're talking about three different reasons. The third reason that you might not want to back up your whole house is? So reason number three is the cost. We've got to replace all your essential circuits with Class A RCBOs or they have to be RCBOs already. Now, the problem with that is once we chain these out, we are required to go out and, and test all of your circuits. So we're going into your bedroom, pulling your bed out, checking the PowerPoint there, going up to your ceiling fans with an earth cable and making sure your ceiling fan is earth. If it's not earth, we have to bring that up to standard. Um, so there's a whole lot more work, which is probably a good idea anyway. But reality is, it is just creating a lot more work and a lot more expense. So if you that... don't need your whole house backed up and you know what is essential, we can then just selectively change out the breakers that you need. How do I choose what are my essential circuits and how do I figure out which circuit breakers need to be changed out? What would you do, yours, in, at your place? Well, firstly, I would think, have a think about, well, what do I really, really want in a blackout? So what I do is I would, say, get a blow dryer or a little plug-in lamp, and I would just go around and I'd plug it into one of the power points that I, I want backed up, and then all of the power points that are connected to that circuit uh, will be on that backup. And then I can go out into my switchboard, put a little bit of tape or maybe mark it with a marker and uh, and I can basically say hey this is the circuit breaker that I want as my backup. So the next video we're going to talk about what you should do once you've got the battery, how to simulate a blackout and how to find out what the limits are of your battery system.